title of my speech was making tier one discoveries in 2020 and what it's going to take. And right off the top, I'll tell you right now, it's going to take a portfolio of tier one swings. It's going to take a management team that's able to finance those swings, a technical team that's able to deliver those kind of discoveries. And most importantly, something we're all waiting for, it's going to take drill permits, which we anticipate having in the next few months. Um, I most certainly will be sharing some very optimistic thoughts I have about our portfolio. These are cautionary notes that allow me to do so. Um, so what we've done here as a company, we've gone out and we've done the portfolio approach in the bear market. We had some big successes since 2005, enabled us to go raise $100 million, creating a seven project portfolio in Canada as well as in Peru. Our goal in Canada was high grade gold deposits, the five, 10, 20 million ounce swings, committee base certainly checks that box. And then out in Peru was to go after big oxide or open pit surface type of discoveries. Um, we built a world-class technical team. These people only became available because of the bear market. But anytime you look at our work, you'll see soon, it's all former Newmont global experts. These are the top guys we could find in the world to go ahead and find this. Lastly, there's three tier one swings that we have. Committee Bay is high grade gold. Sombrero is copper gold. It's analogous to the 10th largest mine in the world, copper mine. And then uh, Curry Baya is something new, but it has multi kilo silver, multi gram gold everywhere. Those of you who don't know us, uh, we've had some great successes that defined us as a group. We found 5 million ounces of gold in Ghana from zero. We ended up building a producing mine. Um, subsequent to not selling that company, we went out to go and try and find a deposit and sell it again. We went and built Caden Resources. And after 100 drill holes, we sold the company for $205 million in 2014 amidst the bear market. This is what gave us a springboard, not only with our own capital, and you would have seen a lot of uh, insider buying, but it's also been the, the springboard to go raise capital because we had such a good reputation from our first two successes and form Oren Resources. This is the technical team. It's led by Michael Hendrickson and Dave Smithson. We just added a, a new manager of uh, VP of operations in Peru named Christian Rios. These gentlemen are all from predominantly Newmont, uh, including the former chief geologist. He was also the former VP of geosciences for BHP. These are real serious geologists. Any answer we look for comes from a world expert that worked with one of the largest mining companies in the world. So really, really, really high quality technical team. The last 12 months, uh, we performed up 43%. There's been a significant breakthrough in our targeting at Committee Bay. Committee Bay, we spent a lot of money trying to find out how to target high grade gold. We've been hitting low grade gold. We think we figured out the key signature for that. Then in Sombrero, we found out what Sombrero really could be. And we saw a lot of evidence that it is subsurface as well as it is on surface. And there's a lot more there yet that we're going to be adding towards that story. So truly a world-class copper gold opportunity. And lastly, surprised all of us was the project uh, called Kiribaya. We had a land position that was segmented with multiple owners. It took us three years to consolidate it. And we've put out quite a few press releases of multi-kilo silver. And I'll explain what that means in just a few slides. Um, as we plan to be very active in Peru next year, we've added a gentleman by the name of Christian Rios as our VP of South America Operations. The guy is more than qualified. He's ran producing mines, and so we are well equipped to go in there with the management team into next year. Uh, Committee Bay, for those of you who don't know it, is a 300 kilometer gold trend. It's uh, one of the biggest in the world. It's got gold from one end to the other with a deposit in the middle of the belt. We keep drilling 20 to 40 meters of 0.67 gold uh, as opposed to uh, 6.7 grams gold per ton. This year, we had our small, or last year, we had our smallest program, about $2 million, and we had our biggest outcome. And the big outcome at Committee Bay was we took the signal in our geophysics, which tells us what's potentially under the ground and what showed high grade on a statistical basis versus all the low grade we've been drilling. We're now gonna use that signal across the entire 300 kilometers and put together drill targets for 2021. So this is a targeting year for Committee Bay on a major breakthrough for a program that will drill in 2021. Homestake Ridge is our most advanced asset. This is 1.2 million ounces of gold and silver equivalent. Uh, this is a spectacular project. You know, we've, we've talked about selling it. There's a lot of value here that's being missed by investors. We are working towards some economic studies such as a PEA at the end of Q1 going into Q2 to show everybody why we think it's worth so much more and we're so undervalued and not getting any value for it. Um, this is a project that we liked a lot at $1,300 gold and it's only gotten better with the better gold prices. 
Sombrero. Now this has been the talk of the last 12 months. This is truly an amazing opportunity that will be a once in a lifetime for us. Our geologists have described it as the, the best pre-drilling target they've seen in their careers. Remembering that I said they're all from Newmont, formerly Newmont, these are some serious people that have seen several projects around the world. This image here shows you what we first saw, the volcanic cover. This project is called Sombrero, that is hat in Spanish. And all that has been given is a few erosional windows. Imagine a few holes in a hat, and that's what we had a chance to go sample and get excited about. This led to a lot more detailed work, and I'll talk a little bit about the history, but truly is becoming a world-class discovery opportunity. So it's copper and gold, and as you can imagine, infrastructure is one of the most important factors of profitability of any kind of mine you can find. What we're looking at here is paved roads almost right to the project with a small dirt road in the last few kilometers. Mine power has been put on this property since we had this project. I'm gonna call that our luck that came in for that. We did not anticipate or plan that. There's water nearby or right, right, right nearby the project where we're gonna go drilling. There's two nearby towns and the moderate elevation, only 3,900 meters in moderate terrain is a perfect mining scenario. So profitability here is gonna be substantial. This here is showing you the end of wireless Yari belt. Uh, Las Bombas in the middle there. It is uh, the, lar the 10th largest copper mine in the world. Tintaya and Tikapai, these are some of the largest copper deposits on the planet. You can see they're all in the pink area. Those are where the intrusions are exposed. In the green is the volcanic cover. And you can see our claims on the left-hand side of the image are in the volcanic cover predominantly. This is where the opportunity lies, and this is why we're here. If our side of the belt was exposed, there's no way we would have ever been here. So let's look ahead and say, what's the history? How did this all come together? Well, the government actually age-dated these rocks as Miocene which is too young to host these major world-class deposits. All the mines that I just showed you on the right-hand side of that previous image are Eocene. We just announced on Friday our definitive results. The most definitive in comparison is the event that created all those mines next door being Eocene is the same age as all of our targets that we're going to go drilling here. So we have the exact same rocks. There's some volcanic cover on them so you can't see them all. That's where the opportunity exists. And lastly, we're the first company to do the detailed work. And there's been some skeptics out there saying, oh, we know this project for 10 years. Actually, every major mining company in the world was on this project before us. You saw the high grade in that previous image. A lot of people thought right away, oh, there's leakage, meaning just some narrow high grade. A lot of people thought that this project was enrichment, meaning just on surface. I'm gonna show you here, first of all, we've trenched or sampled 109 meters of 0.7% copper gold equivalent. We've sampled 232 meters of 0.5.5% copper gold equivalent. If these trenches or samples existed before we got here, we would have never even had a chance. We would have been reading about this because of the major mines nearby. But the big one is in green. Somebody drilled, an iron ore company drilled a few holes looking for an iron ore deposit and they drilled 116 meters of 0.58%. If you talk about enrichment, if you talk about the risk of there being a deposit underneath or not, the only way to solve that answer is by a drill hole, and we have it. Now the horseshoe shape that you see here, this is our drill plan. There's gonna be 25 pads that we're permitting. We expect to have those permits in the next few months, but I'm showing you that, that horseshoe shape or the donut shape because on the left is our targets. The intrusive comes up in the middle, it's surrounded by red as the high-grade exoscarn, and yellow is the actual endoscarn to be low-grade. But just imagine the donut horseshoe shape. We're showing you Tintaya. This is a very profitable mine that was originally mined by BHP. You can see their drill shape is a, is a donut right around the intrusion, and the lower right image is a hole in the ground. So it's the exact same shape that we're going for. We're not trying to find something new, something different. Our case is Every element of those major mines next door that we could compare geologically occurs in our project and it also was created at the same time in history. This here, outside of being psychedelic colors that may go over, you may glaze over, it shows you chargeability on the left and magnetic exoscarn on the right. What the chargeability is mapping is the disseminated low grade. You're seeing 12 kilometers of targets if you drew a ruler around all of those targets. Then the right hand side, you're seeing the exoscarn high grade. This is what, what's gonna make up a combined deposit, a combined grade averaging probably around 0.61%. And I'll talk about why I'm making that speculation in a minute. But most importantly, the yellow box on the right is where those historical drill holes were. 
they fingerprinted the entire signal that you see on this page, which gave value to the 12 kilometers of signal that we're getting from underneath the ground, which gives us an incredible shot and our first two targets to have 12 square kilometers of, uh, of targets to go drill. This is what the core looked like. And if all we saw was the image on the bottom, yeah, that could be enrichment. That's oxi oxidized copper by the surface. But the image on the top is, this is the money image. This is sulfide, that's chalcopyrite. It's running over a percent copper. This is the rock that brings volume into these major copper deposits. So we know this occurs at depth beneath the surface. This is what's got us extremely excited. All of our work to date has been at Sombrero, Maine, um, which is right here. And uh, we're slowly gonna work our way up through a pipeline of targets up here. And we're starting to find things here. There's no shortage of world-class targets to go drill. This is something that'll take a decade to keep trying and finding. But uh, if you don't find on the first one, we think in the second or third, we don't know which one will be the biggest one, but you will see us have access in a consecutive pipeline to test all of them. The biggest discovery that we found in the fall was in the back of some additional stream sediments we did. This target is called Macha Makai. We sampled 7,000 square kilometers. We acquired 130,000 of those he hectares after the sampling. All of our work has been done in here. You can see the red and yellow colors, the more purple, the higher grade copper in stream sediments. This is the highest grade copper in stream sediments. It's over 72 square kilometers. We're about to get access to go work here. It's even stronger than the area we're excited about to go drill first. That's the kind of things we're finding, unprecedented scale, and we're first movers in the entire half of this belt. So, so far, all we've done is work up here. We started to scout through the property. We found something called Hayho, looks like it's pronounced cello. We got up to a kilo silver massive alteration system, never been sampled. We're the first movers on the western half of a world-class mining belt. We see more precious metal content than on the eastern half, but our opportunity here is not one world-class discovery, it's multiple world-class discoveries. Moving ahead, uh, permitting. It's been the topic of the hour for some time. A lot of shareholders are growing impatient, including myself. But we're actually on track to get our DIA this month. That's a big statement and people say, oh, I haven't even been talking about it for quite some time. Yes, this is our seventh month of waiting for the DIA. The fastest DIA achieved in Peru, which is your environmental permit in the last two years, took nine months. Another one closed the other day in 14 months. We're in month seven. What's happened on waiting for this DIA? A few things have happened. The metal prices have improved. The metal markets improved. By the time we get our drill permit, we anticipate it being after we complete our consulta previa. It probably puts us in April, May that we turn a drill. Conservatively May, aggressively April, but somewhere there, which happens to be the end of the rainy season. What we're not talking about publicly too much, but we are been busy doing, is we're creating considerable access to several new targets at Sombrero several new areas we haven't been to yet. You're gonna to start to see us resume work, a lot more results, and there's gonna be a pipeline. We can drill for two years consecutively is what we're achieving, so we don't have to talk about drill permits as much as we have in the last six months going forward. In summary, hundreds of meters of copper has been, and gold has been sampled on surface. If you take our 6,000 samples we've taken, it averages 0.61% as an average grade copper gold equivalent. In our past companies, the average grade of all the samples in the early stages of taking them have always ended up being the end grade. That's a spectacular grade with the infrastructure that I've shown you earlier. We've identified several analogous features, including the same time. This is the other half of the belt. We are first movers. Everyone missed it. We are first movers. We're the first ones to do the work. And we have a drill hole. We can rely on a drill hole. We need a lot more that shows us that, that it's potentially there. And lastly, we just want to keep the drill turning for the next 18 months, and that's what we've set up. So moving on to Curibaya, there's not much information here except for tons of multi-kilo silver, multi-gram gold on one of Peru's, actually an even more productive belt, hosting mines such as Cerro Verde, Quijone, Tocapala. These are some of Peru's largest mines by the coast. The good news about this project, this part of Peru, the permitting is a lot easier. We will be able to obtain a drill permit by Q4. Um, to get here, you, you fly into a town called Tacna, you drive on a paved road most of the way, you get onto a dirt road, there's nearby power, exceptional infrastructure once again for a major discovery which will relate to profitability. This is where we've taken our samples to date. I don't want you to try and read all these little numbers, but I want you to take my word for it. I'll show you a table in a moment. I just want you to pay attention to how disseminated all these numbers are. This is multi-kilo silver, 
across now what's becoming close to a 10 square kilometer area, which is substantial. This is high grade gold in the same area. And if I expanded the image, you would see really high grade copper structures coming in underneath it. These are the numbers. 55 samples run from 200 gram gold to 14 kilo silver. We think there are multiple, multiple feeder structures as well as a bulk tonnage target for the silver. We think the silver is gonna zone into gold. There's 40 samples that run from a gram to 23 gram gold, which is spectacular. And those high grade copper structures on the side are running from 0.5 to 13% copper, which are spectacular because we're on the world's largest porphyry belt on the west coast of Peru. That being said, it's early stages, we're just getting started. You shortly will see us resume work here. We've identified these feeder structures. The bulk tonnage potential will create a lot of volume. We think this is gonna start precious metals, silver zone into gold, and we think it might be next to one of the world's larger potential porphyry targets. That's generally where you'd see in this type of geol geological setting, again, in another world-class mining belt. 95 million shares out, we owe $3 million, we have $160 million market cap and we don't have drill permits. How do you figure? Well, we have some of the best shareholders in the world. I'll thank all of you in this room and anyone listening who's a shareholder, but we also have the opportunities that can deliver not one, but three different major successes. Our plan for financing is coming up soon. We're gonna do another raise predominantly internally. We're not gonna go to market for money. We're gonna put ourselves in the position with 18 million, or sorry, 18 months of working capital or partial drilling money. We'll have the optionality to determine how we spend it. But our success in all of our companies has been driven by our share structure. That's why we perform so well. We've been very selective who we put in financings. If we can't find the right money from the market, we've been doing it ourselves. We did 10 million ourselves last year. We probably do similar amount here in the not too far future. So obvious opportunity for investors outside of the big swings and the kind of things we could be finding. All of the analysts buy targets are above our current share price. All the catalysts that are gonna make that tier one discovery, drill permits, drilling anticipated as we go into Q2 and to be continuous for two years to go make these discoveries. Um, that's gonna be what drives our share price through the rest of the year. So to summarize our company here in one slide, we're, we're most certainly led by science, by all these world experts from Newmont. We're unique by scale and we have a tremendous amount of optionality. If you listen to my podcast, you would have heard us talk a little bit or myself talk a little bit about Spincos. Canada is a standalone company with Homestake Ridge being the mature asset and Committee Bay being a major swing for high grade gold. And that's a bull market company and that's where we're headed for gold. Sombrero, I could argue, is three or four major potential discoveries in one. There's probably even more, but that's what we see with a lot of confidence right now. That's a standalone entity. It's a copper-focused company versus a gold company like Canada. And thirdly, Curry Bias, starting as one of the most spectacular silver potential discoveries that might zone into gold. Maybe there's porphyry later, but these are three standalone opportunities. The optionality, we can sell something. We can spin ourselves into three companies, give you guys three sharehold, three shares versus one. But lastly, the one comment that I want you to all lead with, we are defined by our aggressive ambitions to create substantial shareholder wealth for shareholders and stakeholders through major discoveries. That's what's reflected in our share price. That's what's reflected in our portfolios. It took a bit longer to get drill permits. It took us $100 million to get to these opportunities but we have the best market timing we could have asked for as we head to the bull market. Thank you very much.